Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar, Accomplishing Your VISTA Assignment. I'm Patrick, along with Jessica, who you just heard, in AmeriCorps VISTA in Washington, D.C., and we'll be your hosts uh, for today. So you're just coming off of a, a breakout conversation in which you had a chance both to look at what you were learning in the OSOT as well as what you may need to learn in relation to your assignment and your VISTA year. So up until today, many of you have had a very structured learning environment. And the process of a non-formal and informal learning is pretty new. So this session is going to introduce the individual development planning and then explore sources and resources for training and information that are available to you. So let's start with you. The first few weeks of service have probably been a flood of information. You've been acclimating to your organization, getting settled in your community, and testing out your new VISTA position. Let's take a breath and appreciate yourself for the hard work of listening and adapting. Yay, well done. Well done. And now let's consider what work skills or life skills might come in handy this year. So, please use the chat box to share your thoughts. What new information or skills do you need to succeed with your VAG or as living as a VISTA? Well, some wise guy needs to become an octopus, which I have to say, that little white octopus is adorable. So we're getting a lot of things here in the chat. Uh, someone here said that they need patience. They need to develop patience. Yep, financial literacy, which uh, is a big one for a lot of our, our vistas. Yep, we have some other ones here. Um, grant writing, public relations skills, that's highly important when going out into the community representing yourself as a VISTA for an organization. Yep, we've got community engagement, which is a brilliant, uh, brilliant statement, as well as uh, uh, grant writing or so. Yep. We also have someone here, um, it could be both a work skill and a life skill, de-stressing. They said de-stressing is a must. Um, this year's service can be hard. Um, it can be stressful, so definitely taking some time and learning how to de-stress is key. Yeah, well, I'm a type A personality, so I can't really help you there, but Thanks for that stress. Um, but shall we move ahead? Yeah, there's so many more. You guys are right on the right track, whether it's life skills or living, living as a VISTA or as your VAT. So let's move on and let's go over some of these things that we can help you with. Yes, I just saw one go by, not giving up. I love that. All right, here's today's agenda. Uh, we'll start with an introduction to an instrument that uh, we believe will help guide your professional development. Then we'll take a brief tour of the VISTA campus and identify a few resources that we think are worth your while. And then finally, we'll explore other sources of training and development and look at next steps. So Jessica, let's get started. All right, so as we said earlier, developing a plan of action in a fluid on-the-job learning environment, especially if you're used to an academic one, is a good idea. So we'd like to offer this instrument, the Individual Development Plan, or as we call it, the IDP, as a means to do that. Great. So let's start by capturing the skills or knowledge you identified in the chat. You should have received the link and have the IDP on hand, but if you don't, we've just posted the link in, in the chat. So the IDP, or the Individual Development Plan, is, is essentially a map that ideally will help you take concrete steps toward building skills and competencies you want or you need. So please take a moment to write those skills or topics from the chat as we work through how to develop an IDP. They can be anything from fundraising to personal budgeting to recruiting to fruitarian gleaning. You can also indicate the level of priority that a skill has for you, low, medium, or high. And remember, though we're talking about accomplishing your VAD, I encourage you to consider life skills as well as workplace skills. The beauty of this service is that it encompasses all of it, 
there are no classroom walls here. Now we're going to show you a few resources you have available as of this member. We encourage you to write down the relevant ones so that you can come back to them later. All right, so hopefully the Vista Campus is a familiar site. Essentially, the Vista Campus has classrooms, libraries, a student union, faculty lounge, even a job board. Uh, there is no gym and there are no meal plans, so we'll give that idea. Along with providing you resources related to your work, the campus supports in connecting with other VISTAs, working in your program area, living near you, or just dealing with the same issues. So first things first, when you get to the campus, log in. You can log in by using the box shown on the bottom left portion of the screen, or you can click the blue login button at the top right of the screen. You've all taken a few online courses to get this far, so you must have an account. But if you forget, the I forgot my password link in the white login box will help. All right, so we tried to structure the campus logically. In About VISTA section, we discuss the mission and history of VISTA and provide guidance on how to apply to VISTA. In the life of the VISTA section, we laid a path from before service to in service to after service. These resources are mostly about benefits and general support, how not to break the law, how not to go broke, how not to burn out, 101 recipes for ramen, and then, after all, what to do next. Of course, under alumni, there is a section on how to send us money. I'm just saying. Just saying. Uh, the work, let's move over to the work. There we go. The work focuses on the skills and knowledge related to your assignment. It's divided into competencies that cut across all VISTA assignments and projects, volunteer management, resource development, and outreach. But we also capture project-specific information as well, and general or foundational information like poverty in America and professionalism in the workplace. Connect and learn. This is the student union or faculty lounge, that place where the valuable informal peer learning takes place. There's a lot here, and it offers a wide range of opportunities that we'll circle back to in a minute. All right. Uh, let me see if I can get this ahead. Come on now. Looks like I'm frozen. Ah, okay. uh, there we go. I went too far. Uh, Sorry, guys, there we are, leaders and supervisors. These two sections are for positions you're not in, at least not yet. Uh, le uh, leaders are members, usually in their second year of AmeriCorps service or Peace Corps service, who work to expand and build the capacity of VISTA members in particular projects. Check this section out if you want to know more about leaders, please. And the supervisor section is the repository for resources devoted to supervision in, in the VISTA context. Uh, this section is also available to you except the forums where you need to be registered as a supervisor. So let's dig down a bit, starting with life as a VISTA. Under in-service is benefits. Right. Benefits, uh, or the benefits that you may be eligible for as a VISTA member are listed here. So let's look at the living allowance. You probably breezed through this when you were coming on board a couple of weeks ago. This is just a reminder that this, along with the member handbook, is a great reference tool. For example, this page links to the living allowance rate chart, how to budget on a meager income, how to contact your state office for burning questions, and a reminder about federal and state taxes. And there are additional resources under the resources tab. Right. Uh, if you noted on your IDP that you needed to know how to plan living on very little income, there are good resources on campus. Here are just a few we want to point out to you. So resources for living on the living allowance, the budget calculator, uh, and 
Living on the Living Allowance webinar. Uh, there's more information about webinar uh, in just a little while, so hang on about that. And just in case you missed it, here's the VISTA member handbook. It contains all policy and laws related to your service. For example, who knows how much leave you get? Right. And by the way, click Add this to my learning plan, and the link to the handbook will be added to your favorites in the learning plan. And by the way, your campus learning plan is on your landing page when you're logged in. So anything on campus that you may want to reference later, add it to your learning plan. You may remember our sharing that VISTAs raise double the amount Congress allocated to the entire program. There's no federal program we know of that does that. $220 million last year in 2015, that's amazing. And understand, in terms of creating sustainable solutions for a community and building capacity of an organization, resources are a high priority. So let's look at raising funds from individuals for a minute. Okay. So we structured the subpages like a bento box. Protein is in the larger section. Carbs, veggies, and sweets in the smaller sections. Uh, they're the resources that round out an intelligent diet, but the main feature holds the foundational information. By the way, this Right here is a webinar again. I'm stuck. There we go. That is a webinar from our professional development webinar series. Again, more on that soon. This piece, under other, is actually an assignment later on in the blend syllabus. Remember, an assignment later on in the blend syllabus. But I wanted to share it with you as it contains a few brilliant pieces and captures the issue and dilemma very well. Plus, if you don't know Molly Orshamsky, you'll learn to love her in just a few minutes. Or, at the very least, her glasses. At least her glasses. Look, VISTA service is also an opportunity to connect with other VISTAs, right? I know this is a generalization, but I think you are all well-informed, idealistic in the best sense of the term, and an incredibly resourceful community. Honestly, as an educator, it's just hard to keep up with you. But in other words, this is the community you'll want to engage, where you will most likely grow professionally and personally. Under the Connect and Learn, there are a number of interactive resources to connect you with VISTAs serving around the country. Check out the VISTA forums, where VISTAs and alumni post and answer each other's questions. Based on the chat, it looks like some of you are already aware of the, of the forums. So great, keep that up. And the discussion topics are as diverse as our community. But another cool way to connect is through the VISTA map. Yep, the VISTA map. So let's see. The map shows where VISTAs are currently serving and where alumni and supervisors are as well. So this, in case you can't tell, is the great state of Colorado. Now, one pretty cool function is the map will message someone if you want to contact them by just clicking on their icon. We mentioned the professional development webinar series earlier. So let's take a look at what kind of webinars this offers. Great. Uh, the webinars are structured like the campus, life and work. For example, behavioral economics, writing winning proposals, as well as at home in your community, and time management. You can attend these live webinars by following the registration link shown on the screen. If you're unable to attend a live webinar, though, or if you want to see a webinar again, you can watch recordings of all of our webinars on demand. Right. This page is updated frequently as we typically have two webinars a month uh, for VISTAs. So make sure to add a bookmark to this page and check it out often. One more important resource is the VISTA blend. Now I know what you're thinking, crikey, VISTA's got more blends than Jamba Juice. And we do. There's the PSO blend, and you now get what a blended curriculum is, right? 
it's online, it's webinars, it's face-to-face, -face, et cetera. So there are two other blended courses that, uh, that we have, uh, volunteer mobilization and resource development. These two are accredited by the American Council on Education for undergraduate work, and they're designed with your VADs in mind. The course applications and deadlines for application are here. There's a high demand for these courses, so enrollment is done on a rolling basis. We try our best to get everyone enrolled, but we may not be able to accept everyone who applies. Right. Hey, last word about the campus. Only because tracking your progress may be important to you as well as needed at your site. That's where the VISTA Impact app comes in. It's under Life as a VISTA. The Impact app allows you to track your activities using your smartphone or computer. It'll keep a log of your activities and details like how much money or how many volunteers, when or where. And it'll also generate and send a report to your supervisor. And at the end of the year, this report might be valuable, not only to your project, but to you when it comes to talking about your VISTA service. Yeah. This is actually a mobile-friendly website rather than a downloadable app. So it's not available through the App Store, but will work on the web browser of any smartphone. It's exclusive to Vistas and the campus. So as we mentioned earlier, yep, add this to your learning plan. Man, that was a whirlwind tour. So please visit this and take your time. And there are resources being added to the campus all the time, so please visit often. Yep. All right. While the Vista campus is always a good place to begin with your IDP, uh, I'm, I'm a fan of, of the campus and I will always drive you there. But there are many other free and reputable resources available to get you started. Um, many local libraries have access to online databases and grant writing resources. And the beauty of that is all you need is a library card. And not only do libraries have access to thousands of resources, including trained librarians, they probably have community bulletin boards that you can use to post notices for volunteers, meetings, etc. And maybe you can find recreational or social networks for you to join. Then websites like uh, Coursera and Khan Academy Provide free online stuff from Ivy League institutions, MOOCs. They're not for everybody, but it's good stuff. And check to see if your sponsor has any professional affiliation. If they don't offer any free online trainings through their membership, you may be able to make the case for attending. Yeah. And finally, take advantage of the new networks your VISTA position will expose you to. Um, a great place to start is with a young professionals network. They often offer networking, uh, professional development, and volunteer opportunities. There's, there's even a young non, nonprofit professionals network. Right. Check out uh, ynpn.org to find a local chapter. And you know, LinkedIn is also worth a visit. And don't forget to take advantage of networks you already have, like a local alumni group or fraternity group. Some colleges or universities have mentoring programs and have a means of connecting you to other alumni where you can establish your own relationship. Right. By the way, let me remind you, this is being recorded and this will be put up in that webinar center we pointed out before. Uh, so um, all of this information will be made available to you uh, just in case you're writing wildly right now. So professional organizations are another great resource. They can offer significant professional development and networking opportunities. While not everything is free, it never hurts to see what's happening in your area and ask your supervisor if you might be able to attend. Right. Um, some have entire sections of their websites dedicated to professional development. Those of you in the financial development field should check out the Association for Fundraising Professionals. Uh, and explore their professional development section. It includes everything from conferences, uh, leadership training, uh, executive institutes, certifications, and more. 
And if you're working with volunteers, look at the Council for Certification in Volunteer Administration. Even if you don't want the certificate, you can still glean great tips from the website. Don't forget Points of Light or Energize Incorporated. Energize Incorporated has tools directly related to volunteer management field. Um, for those of you in communications and marketing, uh, the Public Relations Society of America has seminars, newsletters, and other resources devoted to public relations and management skills for nonprofits. And if you're developing a training program or education series, check out the Association for Talent Development. You can subscribe to newsletters, watch webinars, and follow leaders in the field of training and curriculum development. Right. Uh, be sure to explore the training offered by NeighborWorks. Uh, that's all one word. NeighborWorks offers training on everything from nonprofit leadership to professional development, community development, community ass assessment, um, supporting minority populations, everything. And don't overlook local opportunities from United Way or the Chamber of Commerce, Toastmasters, Urban League, or national organizations with local branches. Chamber organizations often host professional mixers as well as events directed towards emerging community professionals. And look, if there's a fee, uh, ask your supervisor. Uh, there's a chance that scholarships uh, might be offered through the associations or training institutes. And it just never hurts to apply. Besides, you've got a great story, and it's hard to turn down a VISTA. So as we've been talking about a lot of things that we've found helpful for VISTAs, we want to know, has anyone found a free course or resource that was worthwhile? Is there any affinity group or professional organization you think resonates with VISTA service? How about that TED Talk uh, that you think everybody should watch? Share your feedback in the chat box now. What are resources you have used for professional development? All right, uh, let's go. Idealist.org, spot on. NeighborWorks is an amazing program. Uh, who's saying that, Danielle? You're spot on. They are amazing, and their training is incredible. We also see OpportunityNation.org. Um, someone here said it's an excellent resource, and the OpportunityIndex.org can help you see what grade your state and even county has received on multiple factors. That's pretty cool. Somebody found a resource for glass for glass in engraving. I don't know what that means, but I, I love the idea. See, someone said here Foundation Center. Um, someone here has said, you know, they've attended the Toastmasters meetings. That's fantastic. That's yep. Been how about Simon Sinek uh, on TED Talks? Love TED Talks. And Our Children, Our Future. And ZMaps.com is a good way to crowdsource geographic data. Excellent. Hey, so this chat will, will remain available to folks for a while. So why don't we just mosey on ahead? Uh, look. Uh, somebody's got to tell you this. I'm sure your supervisor will, your state uh, office will, but as director of training, I've got to. So take time to learn and grow, right? No one is, is going to do it for you. So search the work section on the VISTA campus for resources. Um, take, the, take a campus tutorial. It's worth your while. Uh, the VISTA webinars, We've got loads of them. Uh, they're all listed, uh, both the recorded webinars as well as the ones that are scheduled in the, in the near and distance future. So please, take a look at them. And then finally, um, the Vista Blend courses are brilliant. They're, they're excellent. They're, it's hard for us to make room for everybody who wants in. Um, but um, our our feedback on these courses uh, couldn't be higher, really could not be higher. Everybody finds them very valuable. So now that we've talked about all the cool things you're going to do as a VISTA and the, the change you're going to bring to your communities, we want you as a VISTA community member to show your VISTA pride. You never know where you may make a connection with someone else who knows about the program. All right, right. So look, uh, the AmeriCorps VISTA logo, 
put it on your business cards, in your email signature, on your organization's website, um, just a carpet bomb, uh, carpet bomb your community with this. Social media sites, brochures, you name it, just put, it, put that logo on there. The more visible you are, the more support you get. Uh, and support for your project and for VISTA as a whole, uh, which means more VISTAs and communities doing the work that we need to get done. So what links in the chat lead to places you can get VISTA publications and gear to use in your office and represent VISTA in the field? Uh, yeah, and they tell me, look, don't forget to take pictures and share them with us through our Twitter, Facebook, and Snapchat accounts. We may well share your story or retweet your photo. We're talking about showing your VISTA prize, but how exactly do you do that? Here we're going to talk about ordering your VISTA polo. So you will receive an email from VISTA with instructions on how to order a VISTA polo and lapel pen. Look for this email by the end of this week. A few things to note. Items need to be sent to your project site. Unfortunately, we cannot send to P.O. boxes. Right. And all polos are in men's sizes, so please take that into account when ordering. Keep an eye out for that because we want to make sure you get your Vista polo and can show your Vista prize. And I swear that men's size thing was not sexist. I asked everybody, and they said, you know, the women's things got these darts, they're short, they're, they were weird. So that's why we did the men's thing. Don't hold it against me. So we've covered a lot. Considering everything we discussed, please list one step you can take today after this webinar. Mm -hmm. And what do we mean? Um, could be a bookmark in the member handbook uh, uh, to the learning plan. Uh, could be scheduling coffee with a coworker, uh, or a search for a community association meeting. So what are your ideas? What next steps can you take today to continue your professional and personal development? Please enter it in the chat. If someone says the polos are black, are the polos black? The polos are navy. Well, they're, they're navy. They used to be black, but they're, they're navy now. Hey, someone says Coursera is great. I agree. Those massive open online courses, otherwise known as MOOCs, like I say, they're not for everybody, and the dropout rate is incredible. However, the courses are brilliant. You can you can get an Ivy League education. And Patrick, I think you inspired someone here. June here says that she's going to carpet bomb her organization, so she's going to put Vista all over that place. Brilliant, brilliant. Get her name. I'll I'll send her a pin. Oh, and I love this guy, Eric here. Visit the Vista site more often. Contact more local organizations and get a vet a fancy Vista T-shirt in. Actually, Eric is related to me. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> um, hey, I I don't know if anybody said this, but I I just want to raise it. Get a standing uh, meeting with your supervisor. Um, your supervisor is, is integral to your success. And a regularly scheduled meeting with him or her is worth the trouble. Uh, please, give it a – go do that. All right. Shall we, uh, shall we move on? By the way, thank you for chatting. All you chatters, thank you. Okay, so do this. It's good for you. Um, here's what we suggest, and Jessica is always right. So, one, Jessica, what? We need you to complete your individual development plan. Use this webinar and the Vista campus to refine and build your plan. Two, you, if you didn't already, um, Schedule that meeting with your supervisor. Three. Three. We need you to identify one resource, whether that's an on-demand webinar, a self-paced course, or a video to add to your learning plan. Right. Okay. Four. Reach out to another campus user through the Learning Connections feature uh, or the map um, on the VISTA campus. And finally, research a professional organization in a field that interests you and investigate online trainings, resources, webinars, et cetera. The world is your oyster. There you go. All right. So we've given you a lot to think about, and I'm betting that you have a few questions. So 
Operator, Michelle, can you, um, can you do your star one thing and open this up? Yes, thank you. At this time, we would like to begin the question and answer session of the conference. To ask a question, please press star one and record your name clearly for question introduction. You must record your name clearly for your question to be introduced. Again, to ask a question, please press star one and clearly record your name for question introduction. One moment, please, to see if we have questions. Hey, I also want to say, um, if you want to ask a question electronically, use the Q&A feature located in the bottom right corner of the screen. Uh, send it to all panelists, and uh, a few folks here with me uh, will let me know what questions are coming in. Our first question from the phones will come from Catherine Bennett. Your line is now open. Hi, Catherine. Hello. Thank you so much for sharing this uh, wealth of information with us today. Oh, you're welcome. I really appreciate it. Uh, one of the primary ways that I use to find out what my community needs and to try to um, create linkages for resources is networking. I'm wondering if it's possible as a VISTA to get business cards. Um, through VISTA, no, it's not. And you're absolutely right about the networking piece. Uh, please go to your supervisor and see if uh, the organization that you're working at has any kind of budget where they can help you with uh, with business cards. I'm 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 sorry that I can't cough up the business cards, but I don't have that budget. That's all right. There's plenty of uh, good work being done in other arenas. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Our next question will come from Portia Moody. Your line is now open. Yes, Portia Moody. I was trying to see with the living the live in the lounge. I stay in Greenwood, but my site is in Illinois. I was trying to see if I want to get a house in Illinois to do this uh, live in the lounge. It apply to me or it doesn't. So let me make sure that I understand the question. Uh, your living allowance is for a county in which you're serving, is that correct? Yes. All right. And, and you're finding that the living allowance is not sufficient? No. Um, I stay in Greenwood, Mississippi, but my um, site is in Illinois, Mississippi, but I'm trying to find a house in Greenwood, Mississippi, and I was trying to see do the living allowance still, would it still apply to me? Uh, it would apply, yes, uh, but the living allowance is tied to where your project site is. So whatever community you're uh, targeted to address, that's the community's um, uh, po poverty level that we uh, target and, um, and then make that your living allowance. Does that make sense? Yes. So if if there's any confusion about that or, or you want to discuss that in greater detail, uh, go to the VMSU. Re you remember it's the hotline, that 800 hotline number, and they'll connect you with the VMSU. They'll talk it through with you, and they may connect you back with, uh, with your state office as well. Okay? Okay. All right. We got a question in the in the Q and A. We did. Um, so this is a great question. Um, so, can or should Vista webinars and courses be completed during office hours, or is this something to be done from home and outside of the office? That's a really smart question. Look, we we look at professional development, and by we, I mean not only Vista, but the Corporation for National and Community Service and AmeriCorps. We look at professional development as part and partial of the service year. Um, that said, uh, the first thing to do is to connect with your supervisor to say, look, I want to take these courses. I'm, I'm not playing Candy Crush. I, this, isn't, this, this isn't a game. This is real. Uh, and um, like our, our uh, tagline says, learn more, serve better. Uh, you're, you're only going to be more effective uh, at your assignment uh, having uh, gained the knowledge and the skills that you need to succeed. 
and I'm pretty sure your uh, your supervisor is going to support that. That's great. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Uh, Michelle, we got anything else out there? This time I show no additional questions, but as a reminder, if you would like to ask a question, please press star 1 and clearly record your name for question introduction. One moment, please, to see if we have more questions from the phone. I did see something just pop up in the chat that says, are all webinars recorded? Yeah, they are. Um, I, I just uh, made a blanket statement. I said, oh, should I have? Let's say at least 99% of them are. Uh, it would be weird if they're not, and um, we we put them in the archives of webinars. So you can go through that archive and find some pretty good stuff. We do have a question that came in through the Q&A while we wait for phone. Um, oh, good. Uh, my question is this person, Bethany here, said, my question relates to the informal aspect of the program. How much should we be working independently, and how often should we meet with our supervisors, some of which are extremely busy? Should we take the initiative, or should they approach us? I, I love these questions. Um, th that is a question that I would have thought would come up during the on-site orientation and training. Uh, and the reason that I say, who asked that, by the way? Bethany. Bethany. Bethany, the reason that I say that is because in some sense, this is a cultural question um, relative to the culture of the organization in which you're working. And it's also uh, a personal question uh, for your supervisor, depending on how he or she likes to work. Is it an open door policy? Uh, is it a, a closed door policy and this person is so busy you hardly see them? Um, you need to ask him or her, what is the most effective way for you to communicate with them and to carry out your VAD? I personally, um, would want someone to at least touch base with me on a, on a regular basis. I rely on my team um, to be well-motivated, self-motivated, and, and to be able to identify what needs to be done and problem solve. But at the same time, there are tricks, tricks to the community, tricks to the organization that they may not be aware of. And so I feel it's important that they, they touch base with me so I can say, brilliant, keep doing that, or be careful about X, Y, or Z, right? So it's, it's yet another reason why I think having a regularly scheduled meeting with your supervisor is pretty important. That way you can at least say, look, I got a half an hour every week at X time so that I can touch base with this very busy person. Uh, they can prepare for me and I can prepare for them and we don't waste time. Mm, that's what I think. That's great, Patrick. Yeah. So, um, Michelle, do we have any, uh, any questions over the phone? Yes, I'm showing that our next question comes from Portia Moody. Your line is now open. Portia. I love this name, Portia. <laughs> yes, the question that I have, I understand that we have to also, we have to come up with, like, grants, and we also got to find sponsors for our program, but the program that I'm serving here in Illinois called MESAC. My program, I already have sponsors, and we already have our grant money in. So how do, do I still have to go out and find grants and find sponsors? even though our program I already come with a sponsor in the grant? Um, you know, again, what you're asking me has to do with your VAD. And, you know, I'm just this little old guy sitting in Washington, D.C., <laughs> not really knowing what's going on in your community and, and your organization. I wish I knew, but... I just, I'm, I am not omnipresent. I'm working on that. So you've you got to take your VAD to your supervisor. Portia, do you have a supervisor? Yes, I do. 
Okay, perfect. So take this ad to the supervisor. It, it was not a flippant question. Sometimes our folks don't have a supervisor, um, which really bothers me. So go to the supervisor and ask that question. Um, because maybe your, your assignment description needs to be uh, altered. Maybe it needs to be slightly changed given the new circumstances in your, in your organization. And then your supervisor will circle back with your state office in Mississippi to say, hey, look, we, we changed Porsche's uh, VAD uh, because of these new circumstances. And the state office will either say, way to go, or no, I don't think that's such a good idea. All right, so it's really, you, don't be afraid to engage with your supervisor. Okay. Sound good? Uh-huh. All right. All right, it looks like uh, we are at time. Uh, so uh, my producer says, would you please take a few moments to share your feedback? Uh, there's a poll on the right side of the screen. Um, uh, if you want to send any comments to me, write them on the back of a $20 bill. Uh, my name is Patrick, and you can find me in Washington, D.C. Otherwise, just write them here. Be that way. Just write them down. Um, let us know. Can we improve these sessions? Uh, both this session as well as the breakouts, I'd, I'd be very, very interested in your feedback, honestly. Um, and in terms of uh, future webinars, let us know what you're interested in. All right? So that's that. Um, Jessica, I'm going to say thanks to you. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Thank you all for joining us. It was fun. It was really fun, and I really do uh, appreciate you joining us. So, uh, Michelle, uh, we're going to sign off. And Michelle, maybe you already signed off, but we're going to sign off. And um, uh, Scott, as the producer, uh, I'll let you take care of the webinar. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for your time, and please join us again when you can.